This has been my main machine for the past seven months. It's not polished. It's not pretty. It's got grease on the keycaps, a tattered folding stand on the bottom, and a worn leather skin on the top. It's traveled tens of thousands of miles with me, and it's produced every one of the videos I've uploaded since I bought it, including this one. And while I prefer other laptops for play, 2021's MacBook Pro is an indispensable tool for my work. And at the risk of spoiling my own conclusion, it's the best I've ever used. Now, I wouldn't have seen myself saying that back in November. I upgraded from an older Intel-powered MacBook Pro, which I reviewed in one of the last videos I shot before the world stopped back in March 2020. And the transition from that x86 architecture to Apple's M1 Max silicon running the all-new Mac OS Monterey, well, it was a bumpy one. I had trouble logging into Apple ID, with the machine just sitting there for minutes trying to recognize my password. Many of the Final Cut plugins I use for video editing wouldn't work properly, and Final Cut itself was pretty buggy until the first point release. Now, I say this not because other platforms don't have similar problems, but because Apple is often misrepresented as somehow being immune to them. You know, you, you've heard it a million times, it just works. Well, very often that's true, but to paraphrase my friend Zach from Jerry Rig Everything, this is a computer, and computers break. That's footage from the onboard webcam, which is much higher quality than most. But you can't discuss that camera without acknowledging the abomination within which it sits. I know, I'm tired of talking about notches too, but every time I open the lid, I'm reminded that someone at Apple decided to graft the least attractive component of the iPhone onto the MacBook. And, and we didn't even get Face ID in exchange. It's awful. And it's ugly. And the best I can say about it is that the system usually does an okay job of hiding it. The other hardware hurdle is the size and weight. Now, Apple's own spec sheet tells me the difference between this and the 2019 model is negligible, but boy, do I have a hard time believing that. The new sheer-sided construction makes this feel like an absolute tank by comparison. But here, unlike with the notch, you do get a benefit in exchange. The thicker sides allow Apple to continue the walk back it started in 2019 when it reverted to the older keyboard switches. And in 2021, Apple gave us our ports back. Full-size HDMI, an SD card slot I use several times a week, and when I need to top off the battery in a hurry, it feels so good to do that with a connector that safely detaches when I inevitably trip over the cable. The result of all this? I no longer have to carry the dongle that was a critical component of my everyday carry for years. Now, it's argued by some that we shouldn't be thanking Apple for giving us back features it shouldn't have taken away in the first place. But I see it differently. You know, I see a company that's infamous for its self-assuredness and, frankly, its snobbishness swallowing its pride saying to its customers, hey, we heard you. We made a mistake, and now we're correcting it. I think that's admirable. And the company completes that reversal by replacing another unpopular feature, the touch bar, with a row of conventional function keys. While I do miss the occasional conveniences I found with the touch bar, like using function keys on the calculator or quickly scrubbing through footage, well, this tiny touchscreen never quite managed to live up to its potential. So the only thing I'm truly sad to see go is the ability to quickly adjust the keyboard backlight. The result of all these changes is a more conventional computer, yes, and, well, therefore, a less exciting one to me. <laughs> it's not like I needed seven months to gather enough data to make this video, folks. To be frank, I was just putting it off because I'm more excited by laptops made to, I don't know, celebrate the space program or turn my phone into a computer, or give me more space to spread out with a second screen. It's just not as fun to review a machine that's only a great tool. But that's exactly what this one is. Final Cut Pro edits video even faster on this machine than my former Intel one, in that I don't have to wait as long for it to render. And more importantly, I can do those edits without hunting for a place to plug in. 
Several times now, I've sat myself down for a transcontinental flight of four to five hours and completed an entire rough cut of a video on a single charge. I did something similar on my tour of Mr. Mobile's tech bag for 2022, where I parked myself at one of those coffee shop tables that don't have power outlets. Allow myself to quote myself. So on battery power alone, with the screen set bright enough to overcome the spring sun out the window, I was able to get from a raw audio voiceover file and a blank timeline to a completed rough cut of that Motorola Razor revisit that I published last week in a little under five hours. On any of the Intel-based Mac or PC notebooks I've owned before, I wouldn't have even been able to get halfway to that kind of endurance. And later in the trip, at all the other coffee shops that served as my de facto offices on the go, lighter workloads like slinging email and scripting meant that even if I forgot to charge the MacBook overnight, it was no big deal. And that's a laptop luxury I've seldom seen. I'll say that again. Five hours of heavy use on one charge while editing 4K 60 FPS video, rendering in the background with the display brightness maxed out. Folks, I've reviewed many other machines that can't even give me five hours of web browsing before giving up the ghost. And on less demanding workloads, I've achieved nine hours on the MacBook Pro. This endurance is simply outstanding. Oh, and if I do need to plug in a power back, I can still charge via USB-C or, as happens more often, share power to devices that need it more. If I need to charge more quickly than that, well, it's MagSafe to the rescue again, with a more portable power brick than most, which gets me from zero to 50% in under 30 minutes. If you're wondering how the battery holds up to that kind of cycling, after seven months, macOS reports my battery health is still at 99%. And those upgrades arrive on top of existing excellence you've heard about before. The speakers are once again the best and loudest I've heard on a laptop. My review notes from the first time I used it as a Spotify speaker at a hotel say, quote, it's like bringing a JBL sound boom with me. The fingerprint sensor is fast, the lid opens with one hand, instant on is genuinely instant, and as of version 12.4, macOS Monterey is now as fluid as ever. I wish I had something more interesting to say than it's kind of expensive or it's an incredible machine, but the former is true because of the latter. I don't stop and marvel at its beauty like I do, for example, my Razer 5G. I don't jump at the chance to show off its unique features like I do with the ZenBook Pro Duo. I just use the thing and I take for granted it's going to do whatever I ask whenever I need it to. And if it ever stops doing that, well, Fixing that problem is just a trip to the Apple Store away, much better than mailing it out to some faraway repair center for a few weeks. Again, for gaming, I still prefer a proper desktop replacement PC, like the ROG I'll review soon. And for light work on the go, you're much better off with something cheaper and lighter. But if you're a production professional or a content creator with a need for heavy horsepower when it comes to video editing, well, as a Final Cut guy, I know I'd never buy anything else. If you've barely been listening this whole time because you can't stop drooling over the leather, don't worry. I won't take offense. A skin is one of the only ways to make a MacBook stand out, and I don't think it gets any better than my sponsor Dbrand's premium leather. It looks the part, it feels the part, and yeah, it smells the part. And every scar tells a story as it ages. Hit the link below to get yours and get yourself some leather balm while you're at it. And thanks to Dbrand for sponsoring this video. This review was produced following seven months with a 16-inch MacBook Pro 2021 purchased by Mr. Mobile. And as always, the manufacturer was given no early preview or editorial input into its creation. I'll also add that I don't even have a PR relationship with Apple. So if you think I'm just slinging sweet nothings to preserve some kind of access, nope, it's just that good. Until next time, I've been Michael Fisher. Thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.